Hey what's going on guys, Fuat here and welcome back to another video. In this video we will talk about a few misconceptions that many of you might experience or might have about men. Of course in this day and age it's obvious to everyone that there is tension between men and women. There are men who are hating women because of their failed experiences or because of the media they consume. And also there are women who are radical feminists, they have grudges against men. And today specifically I want to address women who are not necessarily feminists, but they have also some preconceived ideas about men, marriage, and establishing a family in general. And if you're new here, by the way, my name is Fuad, I'm from the Middle East, based now in Europe, and I started this channel with a mission to provide strategies and tools that can enhance our modern day relationships. And also I provide sometimes information about the Middle Eastern culture, and I speak also about cultural issues in general. So if you enjoyed this type of content, consider joining us. And with that being said, let's dive into the video. We've all heard that evil spreads like a wildfire and a rotten apple spoils the entire barrel. When you become adult as a woman, you start interacting with women who are a little bit ahead of you, a little bit older than you. And most of the times when you spend time around these women, you start having ideas and conclusions that did not come from your own experience. You will start generalizing and having ideas that men are controlling, they don't deserve respect, you should not succumb to them, you should not sacrifice for them and many similar toxic ideas that some women would express. And sometimes it could be something you witnessed yourself. You did not experience it with another man, but you witnessed it yourself. You witnessed how your sister suffered with her husband. You witnessed how your mother maybe suffered with your father. And what this is to you is that you start to have pretty negative ideas about men in general. And the same happens with men. See the red colors, how they hate women. See their comments on social media posts when it comes to topics about relationships and men and women and thanks to the internet all these ideas are spread very fast even if you have your doors closed the information is spread through the, the phones and you adapt information without even knowing you just consume them and they automatically become part of you when it comes to relationship advice much of what you see online is generic while we can share the fundamentals and it can apply almost to everyone but always you should filter what you're consuming always you should know that what works for someone might not work for the other even if the problem is similar and this applies to everyone including me the solutions to your problems are often within you you just need to ask yourself the right questions and this is why we see therapists ask questions instead of giving advice because you come to the solution by yourself. You can get asked few questions and these questions will open your eyes to solutions you did not pay attention to. The same way you are aware of your problem, you will be also aware of the solution. And when you get asked few questions, they spark new ideas in your mind. They guide you through a dark tunnel that you were not able to see through. And you start thinking, wow, okay, this question when you think about this question, you think about the answer, you are taking steps to finding the solution for your own problem. And if you are self-aware, you don't need a therapist to ask you these questions. You can ask your questions by yourself. The deeper I go with questions, the clearer becomes my vision. Because sometimes all what you're experiencing is just a clouded vision. A clouded vision can happen for many reasons. Emotions, biases, preconceived notions, or even external factors can influence your thinking. So you don't see things objectively. And as a result, this leads you to misunderstand or misjudge events, people, and circumstances. So when it comes to your relationship with your man, your future husband, you need to ask yourself the right questions to understand the preconceived notions that you have about men, about relationships, from where they're coming, why you are thinking the way you are thinking. And these questions will cultivate clarity in your thoughts, which is necessary if you want to establish a healthy relationship with a man. And I think this is not new to you. Haven't you experienced the time when a, a person asks you a question and immediately it sparks the answer and you, you kind of run to execute on it without even giving the answer because the, the question provided you with the answer. I remember when I was uh, in high school and I was going through my exams and the way I would use the teacher to give me the answer and directly I would be asking him to explain to me the question that I didn't, under, and I didn't understand the question. And they would come to my table and they would see, say, 
what exactly you didn't understand about the question. Some of them will know that I need help and they would not give me any help. And some of the teachers who were helpful, they would give me questions. And the questions they would give me are, are an answer, are the key to the answer I was looking for. And of course, these were the kind teachers, the other strict teachers wouldn't fall into this. But this is just to say that sometimes questions can provide us with the answers. And for you, use this to understand the, your emotions, to understand the biases you have about certain topics. And trust me, the solution when it comes to you by your own conclusion, by your own studies, you'll be more convinced about the solution. That's why you don't listen to your mother's advice or your father's advice or to your loved ones. Sometimes you're so stubborn that you don't want to listen to anyone. But when you come to the conclusion by yourself, you're more likely to use this conclusion, implement the solution and change what you're going through. Change the preconceived ideas that you took from someone else, sometimes intentionally, and sometimes it's just a stain from others' experiences, from things you have witnessed through life. So it's not advice what you need, because advice you would get from anyone. If your friend has a problem with her husband and she applied a tactic and it worked for her, it doesn't mean it will work with your husband. It doesn't mean it will work in your situation. Even if her husband is quite similar to your husband, so the solution can vary even if the problem is the same. Maybe you are different than your friend. Maybe your husband lived in a different environment, lived in a different culture. There are many variables that can affect the effectiveness of the solution. I don't deal with one woman in a certain way because I know that it worked with the other woman. No, I'm aware enough to know that what worked for the other woman will not necessarily work with this woman. Therefore, you cannot compare your problems to other people's problems. So you can ask yourself, how can I go about solving the issues I have with my men? You know, before our parents, our maybe our grandparents, not our parents, they used to marry without even seeing the woman, without even talking to her. They would go blindly into this marriage without even seeing if they're compatible. They would just trust the judgment of the mother, the judgment of the families. But now it's become a little bit different. We have engagement before marriage. You have a few months before you, you marry the person. You can speak with him. On WhatsApp you speak, you have video calls as well. And you can discuss things. Don't pretend to be something you are not. This is a crucial point to understand if you will be compatible with the person. Before everything was preconditioned. The woman knew her rules, the man knew his rules. Before the woman couldn't negotiate this because this was the norm. But now you can express what you want. You are allowed to discuss things, you are allowed to choose. You are allowed to determine how your life would be. But without being like a wild cat. You know, you see wild cats, even if you feed them, they will not be friendly with you. And you, when you lit all these toxic ideas about men and about relationships, about getting married, control your mind. You become like a wild cat. And when you are this wild, no one wants to have anything with you. No wonder you will be so defensive when you are told to do something. No wonder you will be so aggressive sometimes when you express your thoughts and your opinions about certain things. And all this is for the fight to become more liberated. And you are liberated. You get your chance to tell your father what do you want in a man. How do you want to live your life? And not just to your father, you can even speak with your fiancé before even getting married. But don't let that make you so anxious so defensive, so reactive. I know that us men, we are more logical, but you can learn something from us. Be logical, especially to things that should be permanent, such as marriage. 
Analyze what you want, what you don't want. Know your rights, know your responsibilities. See if you are with the man on the same page about them. For us Muslims, and I'm not trying to be virtue signaling when I talk about religion or about God, but this is just because for us Muslims, everything we do is through the lenses of the religion. I don't tell you, no, don't do this, this is bad. I tell you, don't do this, this is haram. If I do something bad, I would be taught by people, fear God. I will not be told you will get a fine from the police. For you as well, when it comes to your relationship with your man, if you are Muslim, obviously, consider the religion. Consider what God has told us to do. What are your rights in, in Islam? Look how the, the man that you're marrying is with his religion, because this is important. Does he consider God in everything he does? If the person underestimates the religion and its importance, what I mean by underestimating is by forgetting that God is witnessing everything he does, or everything she does. That's a reasonable factor that can make the other person worry about the entire situation. And if a religious person did bad things, it doesn't mean that the religion itself does not provide you with the solutions you need. And this is the thing that we spoke about earlier. It's very important to identify the biases you have about certain things, from where, why you're thinking about certain things the way you do. I saw this religious person, he treated his wife badly, and now you have a negative idea about religious people and also the religion, you don't want to consider it. And because of that, you want to be the polar opposite of everything they do. You want to disassociate yourself from them. And by doing that, the idea that God is witnessing all what you do is not becoming part of your life and part of your think. You don't think that following what God is telling you is part of having a successful life. You don't think that choosing a man who fears God is part of having a healthy relationship. Something I tell myself before anyone else. A peaceful life will not be found out of the borders of what is right and what is wrong determined by God. You should have this in mind as well. Never forget that God is witnessing everything you do. And as a Muslim woman, you have your rights since long time, more than 1,400 years. Anything bad that someone from your circle has experienced does not mean that it is what God has said. Your rights are clear and your responsibilities as well. In this era, as a woman, you are told many things about your rights but you're not told about the responsibilities that come with your rights. Don't let him get used to that. Don't sacrifice. No, don't accept. Don't submit. You're free to do whatever you want. No, let him get used to that. Show him you love him. Why not? Sacrifice sometimes. Because at the end you will, you will end up alone. You cannot form a relationship where there is no sacrifice. So to have balance is key. I'm not telling you get abused and stay silent. No, you should have balance. It should be within borders. You can't sacrifice until it reaches certain limit and then you say no. You start to communicate. Communicate your, your limits. That this is beyond what you can endure. This is beyond what you can accept. But if you, all the time, you're, you're pushing, you're pushing, you're pushing. The man will say, okay, I'm out. This is something I cannot deal with. Others' experiences are not yours. Be mature enough to know that these feminists, they had bad experiences. Even if it's not feminist, your mother, your aunt, your sister, when they give you advice, their experiences are not yours. The man they live with isn't the same as the man you will live with. You have to think for yourself, study thoroughly, the things that are making you fear the man. Get to the root cause of your fears. Get your own conclusions. And as I said, your past might have turned you to a wild human being. You become very suspicious, very defensive, overly reactive, overly emotional. But try to fix this. Getting to the root cause will fix that. Don't get help from the people who are feeding these thoughts or nurturing these thoughts. And this is if you don't want to end up alone. Being aware of these problems is more than half of the solution. You can fix yourself, trust me. Now there is also the narrative that all men are the same. 
Many women now are afraid of getting into a relationship or, co or afraid of committing to someone because they think that all men are the same. All men are not the same. Same way there are female victims, there is also male victims. The same way you can have now in mind some names about women who have experienced bad, bad marriage or, or abusive husbands. I can now recall some men who, who has experienced bad marriage with women. They were the victims. If you have experienced or if you know someone who has experienced a man who cheated, it doesn't mean that you will not find a man who is lying. If you see a man who lies, it doesn't mean that you will not find someone who is trustworthy. If one man is a coward, it doesn't mean you will not find someone who will sacrifice his life for you. You cannot put everyone in one box. Because trust me, there are many men who are very patient with their women. Although their women could be very disrespectful. And for sure, there are a lot of women who have endured a lot of bad experiences with men. I'm not saying that does not happen. There are a lot of women who have sacrificed their lives for, for their husband and for their kids. So this is not to say men versus women, but this is just to say that we are not the same. Oh, our fingers are not the same, let alone people. So don't fall into the agenda that is only concerned with feeding you into the outer age culture. They do that only to have control over you. Divide and conquer, right? We've all heard that. You will tell yourself, I will not accept, I will not tolerate, I will not sacrifice. And there's nothing that can work when you look at things with this stubbornness. Now, there is also another issue that comes into your mind when you are still single and about to get married, which is you working, you joining the workforce after marriage or you even working before you get married. You say, no, I want my career, I, I want to pursue my hobbies, I want this, I want that. I'm sure that many of you have now started to realize more of that. Being a stay-at-home wife is a privilege. We have discussed this before and we said that in, during the Cold War, the Western propaganda used to make comparisons between the luxurious life of the American housewife and between the poor Russian factory worker. But that now the propaganda has changed and they started to tell women that they are slaves if they stay at home. But this is all an illusion and many of the women have started to realize that it would be a blessing to stay at home, but many families cannot afford living off just one income. So when you discuss this with your husband, don't just say, oh, okay, are you okay with me working? And he would say, yes, I, I, I don't mind it. Well, you have to think, study the, the topic. It's not an, a simple thing. Study, would you be able to work and also provide the things that he would expect from you? What would he expect from you? Will you be able to spend all these hours out of the house and then come back and still be a wife? What would change in your daily routine? And if you discuss this from the beginning, the man will be less likely to condemn and to, to criticize things when he sees them. Why there is no food? Why the, the house is not clean? You know, because sometimes it's not just that we do that because we criticize it. It's just when we accepted the fact that you will work, we did not think about the ramifications of you working. We did not think it through. But you can, both of you, both men and women should think things through to the minute details because you want to avoid conflicts. One, on one of the videos that I have published, I, ha I saw some comments saying, I uh, men want a mother. No, we don't want a mother. What a mother would do is give us instructions, but we don't want a woman to give us instructions. Even if the woman works, has her own income, should not mean that she's now going to use that against the man. I have my own income, you and I are equal, and she will start to belittle the man that, because she's working. No, I have always the respect for your man. The man will always remain the, the head of the household. And if you're about to go to work after marriage, then give it a thought, study it thoroughly. What will this affect in your marriage? You know, us men, when we get asked by you certain things, we say, let us think. Let me think. Let me think about it. We don't give instant replies. We don't get instant responses. We want to think about it. And the same is with you. Don't give instant responses before thinking thoroughly about the topic. This way, when everything is clear from the beginning, you will avoid the complications that come as a result of fast decision-making. Assess everything 
make sure that you're both understanding the consequences of your decision and this way you will be more understanding you will avoid a lot of conflicts the man will not come and criticize you when you're not doing certain things he will understand you will also understand his rules if i go to work i will not be able to cook i will need a maid i will not be able to clean the house so communication is the key to getting what you want a man would easily agree to, to have you go to work if you ask men nowadays, they wouldn't have objections about their woman going to work. So don't form ideas and have certain things that I want this, I want that, and I don't want to go into this because I would, I might lose my career or he might make me stop working. No, everything is with communication. You can negotiate, you can speak, you can, but be transparent. Don't, don't say things that you will not be able to tolerate and be completely authentic and truthful with the man. A man will not be against certain things that you might think he will be. Now, a lot of women, even in the Middle East, started to see a woman who is a stay-at-home wife as a kitchen slave. And this is an evidence that these women are not thinking for themselves. The word slave triggered emotions in them that made them think that anything they do at home is a form of slavery. No, you can work. But well, you should not forget your responsibilities as a wife, your responsibilities towards your husband, your responsibilities towards your kids. Now, wouldn't it be hard for, for women to be a mom, a wife, and also go to work? Yes, it will be. That's why you need to communicate, because you will need your husband also to help. But everything should come in a, a friendly dialogue, not, I do this, you do that. If you communicate with your husband before working that this will change, this will change, this will change, they themselves will understand. They will be more inclined to help. They will understand the difficulty because you communicated. You cannot hold every pressure you have on you and suddenly you became so angry and you just collapsed. You made the entire house also collapse. The kids are left for the YouTubers and the streamers and the house is dirty, there's nothing prepared in the house, you are tired, you don't have energy. Now the man comes to a, a totally new thing. No, you can't communicate. Believe me, some man will not leave everything on you when they know that you're struggling. Especially if you work, they will not leave everything on you. So not all men are bad, and not all women are bad. If you have insecurities from your past, try to solve them. And if you feel getting married or you have doubts about men in general, use the engagement use the time before marriage to understand the man you will get married with get the benefit of how we've become modernized and how we've now are accustomed to allowing the husband and the the, the wife talk talk with your husband understand his lifestyle his attitudes his his behavior is he a person who goes out a lot tell him if you are a person who goes out a lot and this will prevent you from having conflicts down the line. Maybe you're not the best match for him. Maybe he is not the best match for you. Maybe you you have certain personality that will not click with him and vice versa. So these are just a few points I wanted to touch on. And if you want a video that helps you ask the right questions before choosing your partner, you can click here and I will see you there.